Hello again, ladies and gents. Mr. Dickin again here with the second part of our stats calculations. Uh, again, I'm using the data set that I just had made up uh, with those values. We already went through and talked about sorting these. Now what we're going to do is get some display data. So we've already talked about how using Desmos can find all these key values, measures of central tendency. I do want to touch on um, the previous video. I forgot the code for Desmos but I did recall it. It's STDEV for standard deviation of list L, and that'll spit out that value for you. All right, but I digress. Um, we are gonna get into some display data. So let me get rid of a few of these here. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna make a box and whisker plot. So that incorporates the median and the two quartiles. To do that, all I have to do is type in box plot of L into Desmos. Now you'll see as soon as I did that, literally nothing has happened. And that's because my window zoom is not geared for this data. My window is going from negative 10 to positive 10. The smallest data set here is 24. So I could putz around with the zoom settings or I could just hit this magnifying glass over in that corner and that's gonna customize the zoom for me and it takes the guesswork out of it. So we already knew our minimum was 24, and you can see that represented here. Uh, the quartile for the first quartile is at 44, and you can see that represented here. In the middle, we have our median, third quartile, and of course, the max. Uh, we can do other graphs, though, not just box plots. If I wanted to, I could do a essentially a frequency table uh, represented, though, as kind of a dot plot. So if I type in dot plot of list L, that'll show me the frequency of my different values. I can, again, customize the zoom if I need to customize the zoom. And then here it gives me the option of setting the bin width. And the bin width means, do we want to count up by ones? Do we want to group things by maybe intervals of five, maybe intervals of 10? And maybe how does that change our graph? Next up, we have histograms. And histograms are going to be very helpful when it comes to time for determining skew. So I'll just type in histogram, comma, L. And let me customize the zoom here. So I'll do zoom fit. And you'll notice right now we have a whole bunch of separated bars because there's a lot of gaps in the data. So what I can do is I can customize the bin width. So I'm using data set L, comma, this number here is going to tell me how wide each bin is. Now, given my data set, obviously I don't want to count up by ones. Maybe I'll count up by 15s. So if I count up by 15s, I get a much more accurate readout. Uh, maybe 15s is giving me, you know, too few bars here, and I want to want to have a, a bit more. So I'll count up by 12s instead, so I can get a little bit more detail, or maybe count up by 10s instead of that. So here's a way in which we can go through and use Desmos to generate some graphical data. And just by looking at this, if I were to guess, I would probably say that we're skewing a bit to the left. And if I really wanted to confirm that, I know my median is 66. Uh, let's see what our mean was again. Our mean was 62.6, so clearly our mean is smaller than our median, therefore we are a bit skewed left. So we can see that in the graph as well. So there you have it, folks. Once you have a stat list, you can copy paste all of that into Desmos. Desmos can run all these calculations for you and give you all of the graphical data that you could ever want or need. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out.